contigo. Hola, Cricket. Dios nos perdona y nos restaura. Mover los brazos. Hey, Crickets. Hola, Crickets. Soy Luz Escobar. I am so excited that you guys are here for day two of our super Spanish speaking workshop. And today is a great day because we're going to be learning some tasty words of food items in Spanish. So one of the things that I like to do when I have friends come over or when I want to invite someone that maybe doesn't um, know English or just in general to invite them over to my house, I like to cook them a meal or I like to take them out and um, make them something. Um, my grandma, when she comes from El Salvador, she cooks the best pupusas and the best platanos fritos. So I know that she cares about me so much because those are the things that I used to eat when I was at home back in El Salvador. And she is the best cook. On this table here, I have some yummy food items that I want to teach you the names in Spanish. So you guys are just going to repeat after me as we go through them. Ready? Okay, so our first one is one of my favorites. This is pan dulce, which is sweet bread. It is super yummy. And these items here I have in front of me are, you may recognize this, this is a mango. In Spanish is mango and in English is mango. This one here is naranja. In English, it's an orange. This is called an aguacate. In English, it's called an avocado. They're super yummy and super nutritious, so make sure you eat those. And these are called platanos. In English, it means bananas, which I'm pretty sure you guys like these too. So on to the vegetables. This is called una cebolla, and that means onion. These are called tomates. In Spanish, it's called tomates, and in the English, they're called tomatoes. They're super yummy and super delicious. But the best part are these. These are tacos. These are the most yummiest foods that I have ever tried, and I love them. During Jesus' ministry, everything was centered around meals. There was a wedding in Cana. He had dinner with um, Zacchaeus, and he even had the Last Supper. He was even known to eat with sinners and tax collectors. Eating together is one of the most important thing and practical means to overcoming any barrier, including a language. You may not know the same language, but you can always share a meal and, and eat together. Whether you're bringing one person or many to the table, you can honor the gifts that God has given you and sharing God's love for them. It doesn't matter if the meals are home cooked or fancy. What matters is that we connect people and we can share a meal with other people and share God's love for them as well. So today I have a special guest that some of you may know, you may have seen him on our Worship Zone team, but he is the Richmond Rosenberg worship pastor and that is Brian Garcia. Hola, Creek Kids. Hi, Creek Kids. Hey, Brian. Hola. How's it going, Luz? Hola. Good. So, Brian, how do you know Spanish? Well, I learned Spanish because both my parents only spoke Spanish growing up. So to us, we would, uh, to my parents, I would talk to them in Spanish. My dad was Salvadorian, my mom, my mom was Mexican, and, and my brother and sister, we, we knew, but we, we knew both Spanish and English, but we tried to, uh, anytime we try to be mischievous, we try to uh, say it in English, but my parents ended up learning English through us as well, and so it was, uh, they caught us every time. <laughs> well, that's great. So how do you think knowing Spanish has helped you in your ministry? Yes, knowing Spanish and English has been uh, helpful because uh, I can talk to people from all different kinds of uh, backgrounds in different countries. And uh, although uh, sometimes I think in English, I still know how to communicate in Spanish. Um, and I think it's important to, to be able to do so because you can do so many other things with knowing two languages. That's great. Well, I don't know about you, but I did mention I had some tacos. Mm -hmm. Are you hungry? Yes. Okay. So the big question is, how many tacos would you like? How many tacos do you have? Because that's going to, you know. <laughs> okay. So let's open up to see which tacos we're going to get. Here's a plate for you. All righty. Do you have hand sanitizer? We do have hand sanitizers. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Oh. One for me and one for you. But before we do this, I know the hand sanitizer is super important. But one of the things that we always like to do is pray. So I want you guys to pray along with me. We're going to pray in Spanish before we eat. Okay, here it goes. 
Señor, bendice estos alimentos que nos has dado y ayúdanos a compartir con el que no tiene en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Amen. Great job, Creek Kids. Now let's dig in. Let's do it. Okay. You. All right. Let's see. See if I can open up. These look super yummy. I made them myself. Okay. Okay. Just kidding. Okay. There we go. Yummy taco. Yummy. And I'll take one. And let's see how they are. Mmm. Mm. These look delicious. So mm -hmm. good, you guys. Mm -hmm. You're missing out. Mm -hmm. Wow, those were amazing tacos. I am so happy, Brian, that you got to share those with me. And I am so happy what God is doing for you and what God is using you in our ministry and to expand our Richmond and Rosenberg campus. And I'm so happy for your life. Thank you for coming to share these tacos with me. Thanks for having me. And thanks, Creek Kids. All right, so before you go, we want to teach you guys our Bible verse, all right? So here it is. I'm going to read it. It's in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. It's, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. And in Spanish, it's this. Por tanto, ya sea que coman o beban, o que hagan otra cosa, háganlo todo para la gloria de Dios. Great job, Brian, and great job, Creek Kids. Thank you guys for joining us today. We had an awesome day. I am so happy that you guys joined us. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye.